to a new RFM 103.7. Every Tuesday, we take a look at some of the happenings in the world of politics, and we do that with our next guest, the Professor of Politics at the University of Newcastle, Dr. Jim Jose. Jim, as always, good, good morning. morning, Mark. Wet conditions out there. You survive OK. I don't see an umbrella with you, just your big hat. It's a little drizzly, but... It's not heavy yet, so it's 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 all good. All right, you hopefully it stays that way because you've got to walk back outside in a couple of minutes. Um, lots of happenings in and around Canberra. Lots of uh, bits and pieces to talk about this week. But accountability or plausible deniability is where you would like to set the bar today. Well, yes, I think it's worth revisiting that because the whole idea of plausible deniability is um, a sort of strategy used by political leaders or. Um, senior decision makers who are, shall we say, at the end of the decision making line. And the idea is that the staff below them make sure that the flow of information is such that at any given time, the person concerned can basically say, well, I didn't know anything about that, or my staff did not advise me about that, or that information has not crossed my desk yet. So kind of like a, a, a tap in reverse, we can stop it from flowing back up. Well, yes. and Turn it off. And it, it's, it's not a new thing. I mean, it's part of the, shall we say, the political management style of contemporary politicians, particularly over the past sort of 35, 40 years. It's become almost the norm for there to be a strategy of deniability around almost every major sort of decision, every major sort of event that happens. And we're seeing that play out again over the, the uh, recent allegations in the parliament. The um, idea is that, as I said, you, you don't tell the person concerned and then therefore they can quite legitimately and quite honestly say that they didn't know. Uh, this sort of strategy was really... Um, well mapped out uh, some years back by uh, Professor Pat Weller, who's one of Australia's um, perhaps foremost political scientists. And he wrote this small book back in 2003, I think it was, about the alleged children overboard affair. And the little book was called Don't Tell the Prime Minister. And he laid out the way in which the then Prime Minister, John Howard, was able to navigate the allegations and maintain a uh, critical distance so that the issues did not bounce back onto him um, directly. Of course, when you assayed the evidence and dug a bit deeper, um, his fingerprints were perhaps um, more visible. But the way in which it unfolded then was, as uh, Professor Weller described it, a don't tell the Prime Minister that gives the Prime Minister the ability to deny and to uh, protect his political um, fortune, as it were. And we see this play out time and again, and it's not just prime ministers, it's also ministers and, and their departments. When something goes wrong in their department, they're almost invariably saying things like, well, you know, I was not aware, I was not informed, my staff kept that from me, um, it hadn't got to my desk, mm. various sorts of excuses. So we now have, for example, the former Minister of Defence, talking about an, an incident back in 2019, uh, saying that at that time uh, she wasn't aware um, of what was then um, considered to be a security breach of people being in a place in the parliament where they weren't supposed to be. So here's a tricky one, uh, Jim, and, and I say this without making comment on what we're hearing about at the moment, nor the, uh, the, the, uh, the incident that you referenced mm. in relation to the book earlier. Um, you could possibly quite arguably made a case too that um, a minister or certainly a prime minister um, probably can't be responsible for everything, but certainly it would be a fair call to say that every piece of information is not going that far back up the chain, right? Because they've got so much happening um, generally. And, of um, of uh, course. So, so how does one pick and choose? But I think that might be the point. That's, that's part of the role of advisors and ministerial staff, that they filter out the extraneous information. The crucial question is what gets left out that's important? And part of that is our political judgments on the basis that the particular advisor deems is going to have a negative effect or an impact negatively on the minister or the prime minister. Those sorts of judgment calls are partly what they're paid for. But at the same time, there's also a responsibility on the part of the minister or the prime minister to ensure 
that the um, activities of their department or of their organisation plays out according to the rules and does not try to avoid responsibility for the actions that are being taken. So there's this delicate, sort of a delicate dance that gets played out in which advisors try to ensure that what they pass on to the minister is relevant and appropriate, but at the same time, judging whether if something goes wrong in the future, will this come back to bite the minister? There's always that problem going on, but basically we elect people to the parliament as part of that role, they then take on higher duties in terms of ministerial portfolios and, and certainly the leader and deputy leaders of the parties take on those extra responsibilities. And we expect them to conduct themselves and to behave in a way which is consistent with the responsibility of the office, not simply with the um, respons responsibility that they might feel that you know, I need to be re-elected, so therefore everything I do is geared towards that. Mm. And if I have to sort of bend the truth or um, ignore stuff to ensure that I'm, you know, electable, then so be it. Part of what I think we expect when, within our sort of uh, democratic process is that leaders sort of take a stand and, if you like, stand their ground and take the consequences of their actions um, in a, in a reasonable way. We don't expect people to fall on their sword for every mistake, but we, I think, do expect that when there are serious issues at stake in terms of um, governing the country, that ministers and prime ministers, deputy leaders, will all um, perhaps do the right thing by the country rather than necessarily... Um, dodging that responsibility through these strategies of plausible deniability. Yeah, well, and I guess uh, at the end of the day, they take the paycheck. Their paycheck clears every fortnight or every week. So uh, with that come responsibilities. And as uh, somebody once said to me once, this is the job you wanted. So you've got to do what's, what the job requires. As always, a great chat. Uh, Professor of Politics, Jim Jose. We'll catch you next week on a Tuesday morning. Thank yep, you. See you next week, Mark. 2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.